Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be looking at the domain name system. It's more commonly known as DNS. DNS plays a very important role in modern day networking. It's basically the unsung hero that allows us to use the internet in its simplest way possible. Without DNS, our connected lives would look very different. Let me show you what I mean. The world is full of web servers. Almost 2 billion websites exist today. Yeah, crazy, I know. This includes well-known websites like YouTube.com, Facebook.com, and of course, Twitter.com, just to mention a few. The problem is, web servers like these don't use user-friendly names like YouTube.com, the stuff that you guys are familiar with. They actually all use and work with IP addresses. What we as people see and use is the user-friendly side of things, something easy like YouTube.com, where in reality that is not what the servers and the computers and all of that sees in the back end. They in fact actually see IP addresses. For example, when you say you want to go to YouTube.com, the servers see an IP address, which in this case might be something like 142.250 .188.46. This all becomes an issue since we as humans can't possibly memorize and know the IP addresses for all the websites we visit and want to visit. The user-friendly names on the other hand, something like youtube.com, facebook.com, those ones very very easy to remember as a human being. So IP addresses not so much. Now where exactly does DNS fit into all of this? Well, DNS kind of acts like a translator or a converter of sorts. When you say you want to go to a website like youtube.com, your DNS will in a nutshell convert that to an IP address, which is the IP address of YouTube obviously in this case, and it will tell your PC where it needs to go. So when you say you want to go to youtube.com, which is something you understand as a human, we obviously know your PC doesn't understand that and only understands an IP address, your DNS will go and convert that YouTube.com to its IP address and give that IP address to your PC so that your PC knows where it needs to go, something that it basically understands. So let's see how this works. Okay, so this is your computer and you want to go to your favorite website. So you're going to type something like www.youtube.com. Now remember, Web servers do not work with domain names, so your computer needs to translate this into an IP address, like we just said a moment ago. The first thing your PC does is it checks its local cache on both the computer and the browser. There's also a local configuration file that needs to be checked. If there are no cache entries, your computer will send a query to something called a DNS recursive resolver, asking for an IP address for YouTube.com, of course. The DNS recursive resolver will most likely be managed by your ISP, in other words, your internet service provider, for those of you who don't know. You can, however, also use third parties, such as Google DNS, or better yet, you can even go run your own internal DNS resolver, which is very popular amongst most companies I've actually dealt with. Once the DNS resolver receives your query, it checks its cache. If it can't find an entry for your YouTube.com, it will send a request to another server, this is called a root server. Now, a root server is at the top of the DNS hierarchy, and it's the first step in resolving your YouTube.com to an IP address. There are hundreds of root servers across the globe, but they all use one of 13 IP addresses, believe it or not. The job of a root server is to provide the details of the top-level domain servers. A top-level domain could be something like .com, .org, .net and so on. I think you get the picture. In this example, the root server will refer us to the top level domain server for .com. So then we query the top level domain server for YouTube.com. A top level domain server, TDL for short, is a server that contains information for domains with a specific extension. In this example, we've queried the .com TDL server, in other words, top level domain server, but the TDL still doesn't know the IP address that we need. 
it will however know the location of the authoritative name server. We then send our query to the authoritative name server. This is the last step of the DNS lookup. With a bit of luck, the authoritative name server will have a record for YouTube.com and it will return the IP address to our DNS resolver. The DNS resolver will then send the IP address back to our computer and now with the IP address, our computer can speak directly to the web server. In other words, YouTube.com in this case. And all of that happens in a blink of an eye. So the next time you have a web page that's taking a moment to load, just think a moment about all of this that's happening in the back end behind the scenes. There's actually a lot happening in the engine room that you guys don't know about. Well, everyone, so that basically is DNS in a nutshell. So yeah, if you've got a question or anything that's on your mind, by all means, you're more than welcome to drop a comment down below. Let me know what's on your mind. If you've got a question, I'll gladly assist you with your question. Alternatively, you can also reach me on a Discord that I'm on. It's not my Discord, but it's a group or a community, an IT community of sorts. And you'll find that in the description down below. So that community is not just about Microsoft. It's basically all the vendors. It's got lots of experts on it. And if you need some sort of assistance with your studies, whether it be Microsoft or any other vendor, you'll most likely find assistance either there, or you can just drop a comment down below, you know, whichever comes first. All right, guys, so if you haven't done so already, please give the video a like. It does really help my channel grow. And if you are new here, maybe consider subscribing. Otherwise, you're not going to know when the next episode comes out. Like usual, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Let me